that is not what the budget prioritises, and uh, that's a mischaracterisation of budget measures. So let me just explain. You well, the would you let me answer squeeze. the question, Miss Well, but, but hang on. You recognise the squeeze. Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Clearly our Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, wasn't going to get an easy ride from Russia Nari Ali, Labour MP for Beth No Green and Bow. This was at last week's Treasury Committee meeting on the Wednesday the 29th of March 2023, who, as she quizzed him over a certain subjects of his recent budget, she then turned attention to the cost of living. Then you see how Jeremy Hunt, who's already quite rattled, starts to lose it as Russianari Ali feels he's not only going to not answer her questions, but also feels he's stalling for time by spouting drivel. Um, turning to living standards, the OBR conceded that the, that the British families are now facing a, t- a two-year-long 6% squeeze on living standards, um, which is expected to be lower in 2026 20, than 2019. Um, can, you, can you explain why the budget prioritises giving £4 billion, uh, four billion pounds a giveaway to the wealthiest few? Uh, do, you, do you think you've got your priorities right, Chancellor? Well, um that is not what the budget prioritises, and uh, that's a mischaracterisation of budget measures. So let me just explain. You well, the would you let me answer squeeze. the question, Miss Well, Ali? But, but hang on. You recognise the squeeze on living standards? Yes, I was about to come on to that. I very okay. much recognise the squeeze, and that's why there was a large number of cost of living measures in the budget. Um, first of all, uh, the energy support package. £3,300 per household, nearly £100 billion over uh, this financial year and the next financial year. Um, Then there was uh, the fuel duty freeze. Uh, There was um, measures to help people on prepayment meters. There was a very long list of things to help people with cost of living pressures. And we want to do everything we can. We stand ready to do everything we can to help people with those short-term pressures. But yes, after you've been through an energy crisis, after you've been through a pandemic, there is pressure on living standards and the the long-term sustainable way to be able to relieve that pressure is economic growth. Nothing to do with Brexit then. All the other things, but nothing to do with Brexit, if you say so, Jeremy. And the way to do that, one of the biggest levers that government can control is to remove the barriers that stop people who want to from working. That's how you increase not just GDP, but GDP per head, which means that you have uh, more money for public services, uh, you can keep taxes lower, and so on. And the reason why what you said was a mischaracterisation is because um, the pensions lifetime allowance uh, is, uh, from memory, about £700 million a year. The childcare reform that we announced is more than five billion pounds a year. So, if you're saying where did we prioritise, we prioritised helping working families, young families who want to, to get back to work. But if you look at the background, this committee produced a report some years ago about childcare during uh, during the time that your party has been in government, and many of the childcare provisions had been. Had and many childcare organisations have had to close over the last decade. So you're now playing catch up, having made cuts in the past. But going on to the point about who benefits, the 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 your you know your own forecasters say that about 15,000 people will be receiving 250,000 pounds each in terms of tax reliefs. Okay. By contrast, what we have is nothing in the budget for over 270,000 people who are homeless. 14 million people are still living in substanding standard housing. Uh, 7.5 million people will still be in fuel poverty. Nearly 10 million adults already are skipping or cutting back on meals, and six in 10 adults are unable to afford basic essentials, Chancellor. This is after 13 years in government. And this is after what you're telling us you have done as Chancellor. And I recognise you had to clean up the mess of your predecessors. Uh, and I think there's a sigh of relief in the country that you haven't crushed the economy as well. But over a decade, and this is the, this is the situation in this country, this is what people are having to live through. What are you going to do about it? Because um, well, it's not good enough what you've done okay. so far. 
So let's just go through the points you've made there. First of all, um, I completely reject the suggestion that our childcare reforms are playing catch up. Shocker. Uh, when we came into office, there was no uh, 30 hour offer for three and four year olds. That was introduced, I believe, in 2013. I was very proud that we introduced that. We didn't have that before. Uh, that made a very big difference. Um, I have now extended that offer uh, to babies over nine months. And Where are you going to get the staff from? And so to one-year-olds and two-year-olds. And that is a very big change in childcare provision, okay. which will bring us much closer to countries like Denmark, and we'll remove a huge well, barrier for to... For another two and a half years? Uh, we'll we'll that, remove that, a huge that, barrier. Can I answer the question, please? And yes, because it's a huge, a huge increase in childcare provision, there needs to be a very big increase in supply. You need uh, thousands more... Okay. Child, then if I could answer the question, please. You need thousands more childminders, thousands more mm -hmm. nurseries, thousands more nursery places, and that takes time, and you can't do that overnight. But by September of next year, a million parents will be benefiting from this we reform who wouldn't funding, otherwise have benefited. Can I, can I answer, the rest, the, can I answer the rest of the question, please, Ms Ali? Because um, you, you talked about something which is very... In, well, in health. We can, we can, you can either let me answer the questions or not, but you asked something on childcare, and you also then asked a very important question about what we're help, doing to help people who are disadvantaged. Ooh, it's dropping not much. And what we announced in the autumn statement and in the budget was a package of nearly £100 billion. Pounds. It's simply not uh, reasonable to say that giving, on average, £3,300 per household... But let's be clear, that is an average number. It is weighted to people on the lowest pay. So people, for example, um, on uh, universal credit uh, will get a one-off payment of £900, pensioners £300, uh, people with a disability £150. Uh, then there's the help with their energy bills on top of that. Then there's the help with prepayment meters. And if you ask me, uh, well, you ask me a bigger question about what's happened after over 13 years, uh, the answer is that the number of people in absolute poverty after housing costs has gone down by 1.7 million, including 400,000 children. So I think we have made a very big effort. One of the reasons why that's happened is because there are a million fewer households where no one is in work and that, in work has, that is demonstrably makes a big difference in reducing poverty rates thank, thank poverty. wow the arrogance of him it just knows no bounds does it <laughs> classy way of wasting time by re-answering all questions asked before if you know what I mean and when he says can I just Go back to the last question tactic and his arrogance when he spouts off there. Can you just let me answer the question with that patronising grin on his face? And it just gives off that air of total, utter patronising. Uh, oh, painful is a man. That psychotic grin. But anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know down below and I shall bid you farewell and take care, my friends.